Hey everyone, today I have the Fujifilm X-S10 in my hands and I'm going to be bringing you guys a real world review by showing you guys some autofocus IAF examples. We're going to be taking out this camera at a portrait photo shoot to see how it goes in the real world. We're going to be doing some video tests and some low light tests as well, so plenty to get through and to show you. I also just wanted to mention that this is a pre-production camera, so please keep that in mind when you're looking at the footage and the photos and things like that. I also wanted to say a huge thank you to Fujifilm Australia for getting me on board with the release of this camera. I'm super excited. Right now, I have the XF 23mm f2 lens on the X-S10, and I'm gonna pop this camera on a tripod connected to the Atomos Ninja V so we can get straight into it and take a look at the autofocus examples. Please keep in mind that these tests you're seeing are done on a pre-production camera with pre-production firmware as well. The X-S10 has a 26.1 megapixel backside illuminated APS-C X-Trans sensor, which might sound familiar because it's also the same sensor that you'll find in the X-T4. It has 100% phase detection coverage with face and eye autofocus and autofocus subject tracking. It reminds me a lot of the focus system in the X-T4. I've spent some time with this X-S10 at a few different photo shoots now, and while the Atomos footage might not look as sticky as the X-T4 for instance, getting my portraits in focus has not been an issue at all during my time with this camera. So I'm assuming that the AF overlays might be getting an update maybe through the firmware before the release. But even so, I still found that it can really keep up with movement even at wide open apertures over various XF lenses, including the 51.0. So as you guys may have noticed, Fujifilm went in a bit of a different direction with the style of the body of the X-S10. We have a super sleek and dark design, which is similar to the X-T4, but it's a more modern take on Fujifilm's retro designs. We have a much more simplified top view of the camera now as well. I feel like this is a good direction if you're looking to switch to Fujifilm, but you're looking for something familiar with the layout of the camera. It also has a fully articulating screen, so you can vlog with this camera as I do feel like it's a hybrid photo video camera. So you can very easily have it pointing at yourself here. And it uses the same battery as the X100V, the W126 battery, and also has a single SD card slot. So I'm here with Liliana now at our photo shoot. Please check her out on Instagram. <laughs> I'll have her handle up here on the screen and in the description below. And we're gonna be taking some portraits here in this location. Something that I really like about this camera is that they have a shortcut for their film simulations, which is really cool. So I'm gonna take a shot with each of them to show you guys what they all look like. Did you wanna do a sitting shot yeah. for this one? I'm gonna start with standard here. I'm gonna take a couple shots. And then I'm going to flick it over to Velvia Vivid. And now we're going to switch to Astia Soft. Yeah, the next one we have is Classic Chrome. Okay, next up we have Pro Negative. Okay, now we have Pro Negative Standard. Next up is Classic Negatives. Okay, next we have Eterna Cinema. And now we have Eterna Bleach Bypass. This one's super stylized. Now we have Acros, which is our black and white filter. Oh, I love these ones, they're so pretty. Then we have Monochrome. And last but not least, we have Sepia. I'll probably get you with the sun behind you. Oh, this location's so pretty! Throughout this photo shoot, I've included some unedited 100% crops of the photos we're taking so you guys can see what it looks like straight out of the camera. Again, this is a pre-production camera, so I only have access to the JPEG files for now. I still ended up editing them in Lightroom with my presets though and found them really easy to work with. I like that. If you kind of like sway a little bit, it looks cute. If you guys want to see a video down the track editing the raw files, maybe we can even do a live stream editing them. Let me know in the comments. Oh, these are so pretty. I love the backlit. I know, me too. It's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. My go-to. <laughs> The X-S10 is a small and lightweight camera body with IBIS. 
It weighs only 465 grams, so if you pair it with the XFF2 lenses such as the 23mm or 35mm, it's such a small and tiny setup, making it super convenient for portrait photo shoots or to take it with you on the go or while you're traveling. Yeah, I was gonna ask you to reach your hand up to your face. You like read my mind. <laughs> I feel like paired with that sleek design of the XS10, it's a really unobtrusive camera. It features a single SD card slot and uses the same battery that we can find in the Fujifilm X100V, the W126S. Even though the camera body is pretty small, it does have a large grip, which I found really comfortable to hold even when shooting for hours at a time. And then maybe we could get some a little bit more in the shade. If I could get you maybe just here. It has both a mechanical and electronic shutter. The mechanical shutter works up to a <laughs> shutter speed of 1 over 4,000, also giving you the burst shooting mode of up to 8 frames per second. Then it switches over to an electronic shutter to give you the shutter speed ability of up to 1 over 32,000. You can also shoot a maximum of 20 frames per second on electronic shutter without <laughs> any problem. Okay, okay. Ready? I'm ready. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Oh, unless you like, you can shake it out here and maybe all the thingies will come like towards your face. Oh yeah, that looks so cool. <laughs> While I didn't use it for this particular shoot, I used the electronic viewfinder for almost an entire photo shoot in the brighter sun, which I'll have a video coming out for you guys to watch soon. The EVF is really nice, sharp and bright and has a maximum refresh rate of 100 frames per second. The screen on the other hand, I did use for this entire photo shoot. Like I mentioned earlier, it's a very angled touch screen so you can tap to focus or tap to shoot. You also have the Fujifilm flick gestures on the LCD so you can customize those to whatever shortcuts you need. So I feel like this is definitely a camera with photographers in mind who are into street photography, documentary, travel and things like that. Compared with the size and weight, I do see this camera as a hybrid photo slash video slash vlog camera that you can easily use for high quality photos plus video, which we did test a bunch of the video features which we'll be diving into next. And then I guess we can head down to the beach, we'll get a few more shots there and then it looks pretty good. So we'll go this way so your hair blows out of your face. That's cool. These are actually quite moody. They look nice. You have 18 film simulations you can use in camera for video as well. My personal favorite is Eterna Cinema, which Fujifilm is known for, and I think it's just so pretty. I feel like you can get away with just using that straight out of the camera for video. You also have Face and IAF in video mode, which is what we were using for all these examples. Dan and I recorded some clips in the in-camera 4208 bit, which in my opinion looks great. But what I love about this camera is that just like the X-T4, it also outputs 10-bit 422 externally, which is perfect for shooting in F-Log and grading in post. We had the Atomos Ninja V to record externally, and you also have the option to record externally plus to the SD card slot at the same time. I love that just like the X-T4, the X-S10 has view assist, which you can even custom map to any button you'd like, which is so useful for shooting in F-Log. And all these shots are handheld with the mechanical IBIS on the sensor. So the additional digital stabilizer and image stabilizer boost mode are both switched off. I think the stabilization looks buttery smooth and really beautiful. Dan did not have the most stable ground to be standing on to film this. There were like ant mounds and branches everywhere. So I feel like it looks really nice. 
We also did a little low light test with Dan right at blue hour. For me personally, I think the ISO is completely usable right up to around 3200. Any higher than that and we can start to see a lot of the texture, detail and sharpness start disappearing. So that is all we have for today's real world review on the Fujifilm X-S10. Really hope you guys enjoyed that and enjoyed seeing some more details about how this camera performs out in the real world. I would love to know what you think of this camera down in the comments below. And if you have any questions, let me know as well. I'll do my best to answer everything. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. I make new videos every single week. So I'll see you all next time. Bye.